listen to the Vinny Eastwood Show, my very special guest is now uh, Sivan, or otherwise known as James. Welcome to the program. Hon, it's, it's definitely great to be on, Vinny. I'm glad to, you know, to be here ciphering with you. <laughs> well, you seem like a very happy chappy and, and, and whatnot. Could you please explain a little bit about yourself? Well, yeah, definitely. I'm always uh, charged up, obviously. Um, well, just to introduce myself, I'm James Evans Bomar III. Some people know me as Sivan. I'm the author of The Code of the Matrix and the developer of the Resistance platform. You can actually Google the Resistance and get us on the front page so you know how hard we're hitting. And uh, now we're opening up a new platform called AstroQuest, which is basically about using the body as the universe and traveling around into different spaces in order to get a maximized understanding of exactly what's taking place on the planet, which is still you. (laughs) (laughs) And what's your website there? Uh, the website is that you can get us at www.astroquest.com for simplicity. And uh, obviously, we're at resistance2010.com. We've been there for about four years, kicking out esoteric knowledge. Of course, we have the largest esoteric library on the internet. That's actually www.esotericlibrary.com, and that's free. So you can go and get all your esoteric knowledge that you need. We have about 3,000 books in there. Also, some masses, massive image libraries and video libraries that we put together and just source for those who are ready to experience uh, self. <laughs> it's yeah. the easiest way to say it. Oh, we, we, uh, we love um, getting into the esoteric and all, and all of that kind of stuff. We, uh, we were doing a show uh, for a while with uh, Freighter X uh, called The Dark Occulted Mysticism Show. And uh, it was just basically sitting there having, having a, a good laugh and stuff and uh, talking about some of these things that are really, really weird and some, some are actually really uh, enlightening. Oh, yeah. I mean, 100% truth is always going to be stranger than fiction in many tenses. Uh, In fact, that's uh, probably where most of the science fiction and things come from is definitely from uh, what's going on in the spiritual realm. Uh, Obviously, it's all meshed together. Like, I think that we're just used to looking at one aspect of it. Obviously, in the ancient times, if you were studying, like if you were doing like what we were doing, it's just called studying flesh. But if you were in the higher the higher levels of consciousness, you would just be looking at it through light. That way you can kind of deal with it before it hits the whole fleshly spectrum, which everything does transcend from a certain place all the way here. So it's just better to be working with things at the control point. And so really, you know, this is a massive level of information and knowledge that we're bringing forth. It's not the same as what people are delivering. And it's always remained like that. It's more like uh, in many tenses, Willy Wonka's factory. You know, it's just some people get in there. Some people figure out how to get inside the resistance. It's not locked. You can get in there. But we're, uh, we've always been one of those factions that not everyone is known about for various reasons, uh, various levels of bureaucracy, we'll say. And, uh, but for those who have found it, they found a real treasure, a real, a real well of, uh, and a wealth of information about everything from etymology to you know, Kundalini and to the real stuff, man. We ask the real questions, we get the real answers, and we're not, you know, we're not in this for any motive beside our expansion. So we move, move out of the way all of the... Um, I call it the fluff, and we really want the cream of the knowledge. Like, obviously, you can give me a book that's 10,000 pages, but I'd rather sit next to somebody who read the 10,000 pages and just be like, so what did it really say? So what, out of all of that, what did you really get out of it? And so that way I can compress it so I'm not wasting my time. And people have to realize Man that. Man after my know, own heart. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, this is a massive universe. Actually, I saw that on your Skype. It's like, why waste, why waste your time? If somebody's not going to power you up, motivate you, and you be able to do it to them, then... Sh- There's a billion people out here. There's billions of people and billions of experiences, even more than that, that we can have. So why not find the one that's going to harmonize with you? And so now we're, of course, working with higher levels of harmonics. And when I use these words higher, I just I have to say that sometimes so people just demark what we're talking about. But I'm still talking about something that is free of duality, free of judgment, you know, in many tenses, like no filters, And you just get it raw and you get it the way that it is, whether you could accept it or not. And, you know, so there's a lot of stuff here that's on a mature level. Um, And some people feel like you may get the cooties with talking about some of the stuff, you know, that sometimes you have to discuss when it comes to talking about this body and what exactly is needed to to power up. And uh, so, yeah, we've been been basically riding this cosmic wave for a while, man, like, uh, I guess, an intense silver surfers with, you know, we're really mean on the board and we don't fall off. And it's just been consecutively year after year, uh, like a, a upslope. We've never really stayed at one thing. That's kind of how my conversation I was going to have today was just going to be talking about just some of the phases that we have went through 
with our understanding, as we call it. We don't use the word understanding we, or overstanding. We use the in, understanding because that's the first place people are going to have to make any type of stand for themselves. And then, you know, you come into massive levels of knowledge. Like I heard the previous conversation, obviously, uh, with you and the gentleman. And uh, I want to definitely get into at some point in this conversation about principalities and dominions. Really, if you want to not have someone that has power over you, how you position that on a spiritual level. Because, you know, it's kind of brute force messing with it on the fleshly realm. And, of course, they're geared up, as you've noticed. But as you see, even a sheriff, he wears a badge. That's a star there. There's seven-pointed stars. There's different stars. So don't think that these people are, are, are not understanding cosmic law and, and fudging with cosmic law, uh, also galactic law. Um, and then, of course, they have their own laws, which can easily be broken. But cosmic laws, you can't break. So when it comes to putting someone in a cage, locking someone down, putting them in a pen, and you're doing that to a soul, there's still cosmic laws that you need to fully understand. And then obviously what they've discovered is certain loopholes, that if we knew, knew and understood spirituality, then we could easily catch it before it occurs. But the beginning of this conversation was really about the language and about uh, really seeing that the way the, uh, the language is constructed. And I'm not sure if we're on the first half of this conversation, so we only have like a short period of time. And I don't want to kind of get cut off in the middle of it, but I'll start it. The language in itself, if you understand, look at the English language, it's 26 letters, okay? So if you understand the ancient mystery behind letters, numbers, et cetera, you understand that a label, a language is a cabal or a cable. It, the first letter has to connect with the last letter. That's like a cable. The front end has to connect with the back end, like they call A to Z, right? So in the English language, the way that it's formed is like a half of a circle because it's 26 letters. Now, if you take 26 and add it to 26, 26 times two, it gives you 52, okay? 26 times two is 52. This gives you 52 weeks or a whole annum, 52 cards in the deck. So you can just tell right off the back, just from that, that glimpse inside the language that you're not dealing with just a simple statement, scratches and sticks put together to formulate a tone or a vibration. You're dealing with a cabal. You're dealing with the actual words, tones, vibrations that evoke things themselves and always have. Language has not changed much. The meaning of it has changed in our minds. So, you know, this is what we get into. We get into the framework if, uh, if, of the matrix, if you may. Uh, we get into the firmware of how things are put together. We don't play around with beta additions and playing around with other revisions and upgrades, et cetera. We're dealing right with the core structure so that way we can get into it. It's because there's, there's this one thing that about spirituality, you just gotta be serious. Like whether you're going to do something benevolent or malicious, either way, you gotta be serious. There's gonna be a point where things get really real in there. And so that's what we're talking about. We're dealing with a network now of 7,000 active members and so that's about 14,000 eyes in our tents because all we're doing is, is in a sense, data harvesting, but also har harvesting the spiritual experiences. Everyone's comparing notes. So, hey, what did you see? I took this, this is what I saw, or I dreamed this, or I went here and this is what I saw. And then we try merge it or merge it even more than three times to connect to see inconsistencies, lies, which you always have to purge things for. And uh, what we've come up with is an immense body of knowledge. It is literally a corpus, a body. It is our body of exactly what the big secret is here. The big secret is us. We're universes, no matter how long it takes us to figure that out. Now, look, just on a simple level, how many atoms are in the body? I think it's over trillions of atoms, right? But one of them is an immense level of energy to explode everything. So just from that alone, no matter what anyone says about you and what, you, what they think you are and what you think you are, even after a bunch of marks, labels, and tags, it doesn't mean you're not sitting on an atomic megastructure with the power of implosion of an entire universe, or in, in this case, an interverse. Because now we start to get into the core energy, like everyone's looking for free energy uh, for cars and buildings and all this. I need free energy for the body. I'm tired in many tenses, working four or five jobs, and then you got people screaming at you and all this. I mean, what, what's up? Can I plug in? Is anything going into this PlayStation or this TV that can I plug it into? And then what we figure out is, is that the plugging in is already going on. Human body is docked, and there are ports all over the body. This is, of course, what we take in. Things are always boarding us and to the point where we're just as run down as the Earth is. This, there's a symbiotic in everything. 
And if you could see the corpuscles as you activate third eye, you start seeing these globules going through the air. It could be just garlic. It could just be a scent from a rose, but it's all traveling in these little orbs, right? And they go in the nose, go in the ears, go everywhere, and they dock. And that energy and that essence becomes a part of us and affects us in a certain way. Likewise, when we eat something, when we put something into the celestial vehicle, of course, the head as above, so below. The head controls everything, so it's the one deciding what it's going to put in, right? I'm going to eat this, but once it eats it, as above, so below. Now it's going to go down in there. So how this whole thing was wired, and I'll probably coming up on a break here in a moment, but how it was wired together is that there was a battle. And in the scripture, which is nothing but uh, internal metaphors, if you really understand it, but now it's external, externalized. But it talks about how there's a battle in heaven. Okay, so there's a battle up here. Michael, who's the winged one, basically, the angel with the wings. If you cut yourself off right here, this part of the body, because this whole thing's like Voltron, you cut yourself off here, and you're going to have these two arms in his head. And trust me, that's enough to fly. <laughs> if you didn't have all this down here, you would be able to fly. So what I'm saying is, is that this whole Michael state of consciousness up here is at war with none other than Satan. Satan is always known as the cedar, the, the, found, the builder of the foundation. It has a lot to do with reproductive, sexual nature, heat, those kind of things, right? Because that's the hearth of what burns up the impurities that is, takes place in, of course, lower areas called hell. So this is the war because the urges from the lower body, you know, you know them all, it's pretty much every urge, habit, inclination comes from the lower body, lower state of consciousness, are always trying to wrestle and get into the kingdom, meaning trying to get in your mind to get you to make the decision. Today, we were also gonna talk about the external serpent, this means that they're creating this bipedal hybrid serpent that's ultra smart, whipping the crap out of humans. But in reality, if you really understood the story, you'll understand the serpent is silent, but deadly. So anything you're seeing right in front of you, you got to ask yourself, is this really it? Or is it so silent that it's actually speaking in my mind? Now, in the ancient text, it's the Uda bin la himen la shaitan rajim, meaning protect me from the whispers of shaitan, meaning the whisper is not something that you can hear. Like, I can't hear your thoughts unless I turn on that node. I can't hear the person's thoughts. So this is the war, right? This is where they're operating. Lady Gaga and Tyra, Tyra Banks and all that is just, that's a, 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 a what do you call it? Um, <laughs> interference. They run an interference. So, because what happens here is that now inside of your corpus, inside of your body, you have all of these worms and entities, viruses, bacteria, bacchus living in the body, right? Now, everything is hardwired with one particular sense that has allowed it to thrive, survive. So you can't blame cancer, who's a dead cell. Cancer means the serpent, by the way. You can't blame cancer for trying to survive in an actual body or a vessel or a garden that has been configured for it to survive. Meaning what we eat, like artificial foods, all these different things, that's what it eats. This is the symbiotic relationship that's been formed with a vampire. Meaning that in, in reality, you see the big shark and you see these little fish eating all the little stuff off the shark, right? To keep him clean. And they're also hanging around the shark because there's other fish that they're, these fish are too small for the shark to eat, but uh, small enough for other larger fish to eat, so they hang around the shark, right? So this relationship is formed. So it's the same thing with when we eat certain things, something's got to eat that. So this is when we get into realm dynamics terrain modification. This means that inside of the body, you got, man, you're overrun. You have so many different microscopic organisms attempting to thrive, as the documentary calls it, that your whole frequency is their frequency. So when they say we're hungry, it's not your idea anymore. Your kingdom's been overrun. Your head does not eat food. It eats crystals, essence, air, all of the stuff that corresponds to what is closer to the emanation point. The lower body is the one still stuck on flesh and meat and blood and all these different things. This the roots to the foundation of everything. So at the same time, if you open up this box and you do that in a, re if you open up this box of primordial foundation into a 3D physical buffed out garden, of course it's going to look like evil. So this is the, the error is 
going into all of this, basically the, the tunnels of time, the tunnels of set is what it's called. You going into the past and bringing out reptile man <laughs> and then blaming him that he's acting all primordial when now he's been absorbed too, meaning the human being has the genes of every single entity's flora and fauna on this dimension, period. That's how it's always been. So before we can say that there's another, you have to ask yourself, is it really the humans that are the hybrids with the reptile DNA running around terrorizing each other? Aren't they the ones behind the gun? They all, of course there's the scapegoat Jesus concept program running everywhere where everyone wants to blame someone else, but in reality, the Vatican is vacant. <laughs> They're some, the only people that are now controlling this reality is us, on this screwed up code. Mm -hmm. So that's the beginning of Babel in every tense because that has a lot to do with what? When the God says, let us go down and confuse their language. Yet this is the God that they're worshiping. You see what I mean? So in many tenses, let me turn off my notifications here, excuse me, but in many tenses, you'll see that they erected a God, good, a Germanic God. Notice how in other parts of the world, excuse me, uh, there again is the uh, the notification, and I do apologize. Oh, we can't get we can't hear it, mate. <laughs> oh, okay, great. All right, so all right. Well, let me just turn my cell phone. Do not disturb, and um, and I'll call that person when I get off on it. I do apologize for that on your show. But again, again, the Germanic god Gud. Okay, just to show you how the etymology is powerful. It's important. God is a dog. <laughs> like, let me show you. In if you understood any of this stuff, just because a word is turned around does not mean it means a different thing. We'll get, it at, well, we're, com we're coming up to break uh, uh, very okay, shortly, and um, my friend uh, Jonathan Eisen, who uh, does this magazine here, uh, Uncensored, he, he told me a joke one time. He says, uh, "What is an uh, existentialist and a uh, what was it? An insomniac and a uh, and a dyslexic? What is it? What does that person do? You get what do you get if you cross them all together?" not there is a, if there really is a dog we'll be right back after the break at the vinnie eastwood show.com so what we're really talking about because obviously I, I can expand into what i was discussing earlier in just a massive way but i also want to let everyone know you know how this came about like how this energy is routing through me and that connection really comes in with what we've just kind of called the universal mother and the fact still remains that in, on this planetary system that we receive our substance, like we receive our food, we receive these, uh, the mangoes and the, the pears and all of what we get. Oh, comes hold from on a second. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that there was some major technical okay. uh, issue that happened just back there and uh, my, <laughs> my, my modem uh, kind of uh, fracked out. I, I, I don't know what happened. But anyway, I was telling a joke before we went on to break. And uh, what was the joke? I got it here. What do you get if you cross an existentialist, a dyslexic, and an insomniac? You get a guy who stays up all night wondering if there really is a dog. <laughs> I was, I mean, I thought that we would be uh, having some massive jokes a lot earlier in this conversation. You let me kind of get off on the serious side really heavy. But I guess this is serious, literally. The planetary system serious, AKA the dog star. Like it, it won't stop with this. It's a train, it's a wheel, it should connect, right? And realistically, it's all starting to connect. Like what happens, right? If you got a, this 5,000 piece puzzle, you know, some people, they like this. And it gets a 5,000 piece puzzle and you actually get, let's say 4,832 pieces together. Now it should not be that hard to put together the last few pieces. And so that's what's literally happening. We're starting to see now because of this huge puzzle that we had to put back together, what exactly is going on in the, the, the conspiracy or the intricacy of it. It has to be an adventure. In fact, to me, it can only really be in some tense laughable you have to even at a certain point just say man this is crazy how i cooked up so what are you telling me you're telling me that i'm immortal but i knew i was immortal so what i desire was another state which could only be death are you telling me that in all this immortality that i needed to invent something to keep the drama going and realistically it comes down to a lot of that for our ancestors which were us 
The disconnection is, of course, apparent. Obviously, we don't seem to talk to anyone on the other side of the grave. And I want to explain this to you, by the way. Obviously, that's not popular. But if you close your eyes, you'll see limitless. If you open your eyes, you'll see nothing but limits. Okay? So when you close your eyes, you see this field that if you can't project anything into it, meaning if the moment you close your eyes, you don't see another world, it takes you a while. They call that sleep and dreaming. But if you can't see that right away, that light in your head, that's because of how much currency you have. Now, let me tell you, there is a point where you can close your eyes and in that blank, vast depth vista that looks like 1080i, you can actually bring up any type of reality if you got the processing power. So do you see why this type of stuff is hands off in a reality that always wants to show you that you can't fly? <laughs> See, if people start to actually tap into the universe, then, oh my goodness, goodbye universe in a tense of an external level. Because you notice the words universe mean united in conflict. Uni, together, verse, separate, fighting, right? So what is the universe really? Hmm, the body. See, the body is the only thing, a heart, liver, surely liver is not heart doesn't even want to be hard. Surely neck, leg is not arm. So you got all of these different divided parts, but that have to still be together. And then is there a, a, a fight going on? Of course, when you throw some alcohol in the mouth and it gets to the kidney, it, he's inflamed. <laughs> he's upset. So this non-mutual respect for other life forms, which is basically you respecting yourself, will easily bleed into a three-dimensional reality in which you're projecting on a time lapse. Meaning that if you don't do it correctly to yourself, how is someone else gonna do it correctly to you? If you don't know about you, how is someone else gonna know? <laughs> and it even gets deeper. If you have children, which are, you put, you put your seeds here. Now we're just also talking about ideas. Ideas are seeds too. And you bring them into a reality or a pen in which you don't have a way out you're trapping your biorhythm. So people need to, why are we at 7 billion people? There should be an elevator, sky elevator. Go get up out of here, man. It's already, this is that full tilt. Didn't, there's another universe next door. Why are we all in this same space? It's because when you put things in the same space and they start to get bump against each other, like this whole 7 billion people now, now all the souls are all crowded into this bubble and everyone's trying to figure out how do I get out? What if you told them you had to get in? You see, like they're looking for something. I want to get out. Is it in the sky? Now, who's responsible for this? That's the other thing. Like, I come here to, I'm enforcing. I don't have time for talk. Talk is cheap. <laughs> I'm talking for free. That's how cheap it is. So the reality is, is that I come here to deal with certain entities that have been doing this across time lag meaning that when the seeds get a little sluggish and they don't understand the whole spiritual dynamic, they get caught up in these kind of situations and traps. Now, reincarnation, let us explain that. Not jump around too much here. When you die and you leave out of the body, you immediately rush to the next portal that, you, that attracts you. It appears like a light. This is why when you walk by someone, and especially if it's of the opposite sex, and you see them in the eyes, there's an attraction or not. And of course, the eye is a gateway to the soul because these are gateways, these are portals. So when the soul comes out of the body, now if you've been living in this dank, low character that's guided on animalistic instinct, which you could easily refuse as an apex being called a human, and then you go rush to the next propagating point of copulation, which is basically your mother and your father, as you're calling them, then you reincarnate or spawn into the reality again. So this is why they were saying that you have to watch in, in many tenses the difference between the love and the lust. You have to watch the difference between motive and compassion. You have to watch that these two serpents, right, whether they be white or black, will still mislead you. This is the caudacious staff. You see the serpents going up and then they go up to the globe and they're on the side of the globe. Now, imagine that globe as your head. Okay, on the caudacious staff, on the top, there's a globe with wings, as I told you. This is the winged area. So if the globe is up here with the wings and these two serpents are here, what are they really? Do you ever see the character with the good and the bad angel <laughs> whispering oh, yeah. in the ear? You, you should do this. They're wrong. 
this is really the right way. What about the left way? <laughs> because either way, it's not balanced. See, what we have to learn that these ultra-purified people have contaminated the upper kingdom. They're bougie up there, and they got it stuck and blocked just like everything else. If a person is not cycling through chakras, meaning you're not sharing, you're not giving your experiences, you're not happy when you see someone. If you're not doing that, you're stuck, stuffy, right? So when we look at all of the individuals in our reality, they're all clogged up with the money and the, and the material and the mass. The whole reality needs a kalima, if you ask me. So this also is manifesting in the person's physical body. As I said, what, what is the guy named he died with 30 pounds of fecal matter in his, in his uh, kidneys? John That's Wayne. your bowels. John Wayne, okay? That's your bowels. Now, bow means Lord. B-O-W-E-L-B-A-A-L. Bow is the God of hell. Now, what are we talking about again? We're talking about that lower part of the body where it burns up all the impurities accumulated by the upper body. So if it's not working right, if your hearth is not working right, then it can't burn up the impurities. Now, what if your consciousness then, instead of being in the root chakra, excuse me, what if your consciousness, instead of being in the crown chakra, is deep in the tail in the cossacks in the bone in your root chakra in your spine where you used to have a tail? Let me say, do we have to tell? What are you talking about? We didn't have tails. They already told you the Cossack's bone is the domesticated piece that's left. Like you do a do Doberman pincher and you chop off the tail. The rest of those vertebrae were the other rest of 33. 33 didn't complete anything. 33 is a third of something. We don't have 33. We have, if anything, 100 or 99, but not 33. So you watch the domestication, but still realize it's just a physical vehicle. If I cut off the arm, it's still there on the astral plane. Anyone that is, has an amputee will tell you, I dream with an arm on. I, I don't know how it's a phenomena. So all of what you still are is not too far from you. It's just about us knocking down the divisor or the barrier or that wall, that veil, that evil, V-E-I-L, V, uh, E, V, I, L. They're all veil. So you got to pull down and rip down that veil and then all of a sudden be ready for what you're supposed to see. Now, this division symbol, let me show you how it turns into even symbols. Look at the division symbol. It's two dots or two orbs with a line in the middle. So there's something dividing one from knowing the other. Basically, the human from knowing about afterlife. From realizing that even the mother or the father that's dead, when you close your eyes, you can see them and talk to them again. But wait, you're talking still to their eidolon the idea you have of them. You cannot expect for them still to be that. They metamorphosize, they transmute it, it's metamorpho. They may be up there on the Arabot or in the high levels of the consciousness by now, but still what you can see in your mind's eye is what is enough. That's why, again, there's no disconnection between the other side and us. So let's get into some, you know, let's get into some stuff. Like it's an open book here. There's really nothing that we can't answer. So it's a good time. Uh, I'm not sure if people can ask questions or whatever, but it's a great time for individuals to actually see uh, if they want to get some answers to some questions that they've been running to run across someone, if they actually could talk to someone who knew everything. Now, I'll tell you this. If you say you know everything, let's get it straight, you've already utterly failed. Yeah, I, I've and got the this reason, saying is that the man who thinks he knows everything obviously knows nothing. The man who says exactly. that he knows nothing knows enough. Exactly. And, and because the simple fact also is, is that because we're powering ourselves on our ideas, once we think that we have everything, there's no more power. But what I am also telling you is, is about this immediate universe, mm, there's nothing new under this sun. We mastered this. This is five base knowledge, 72 degrees times five, 360 degrees is the perfect circle. It's a pentagram. Then they talk about the serpent. It's fire. This whole world's built on combustion and conflict. Some people call it mitosis, division. The God is called Zeus or Zeus. When you die, that means two, to split, basically. So the whole thing here is about a cross, right? Because there's the same two, two sticks together. And so in, in sometimes this is like A, B, C, one, two, three. That's how simple it can be. Or we can talk, start talking about centripetal and centrifugal and swoop, swooning on torus fractions and, and imploding through tornado currents. You see what I mean? What? 
But that's what we have. We have a diverse group of beings here on the planet that can equally philosophy in scientific tongues and then break it back down to religious, contextual, orthodox script. Because mm. why? We are in ourselves willing to do anything to survive. The moment that we actually figure out that to really live, to really put yourself into the control seat is about us, that's when the game begins. Mm. It's, not, it's never going to begin with us continuing to pour out an endless level of energy that we don't have anymore towards this external reality and them doing, the, doing their Ouroboros. They, they're gonna do, they run out this thing like a ceremony. They're gonna, you see it, you track it now. The only reason we track it because we got TV and computers, but they do the same thing. They cause a problem, reaction, solution, et cetera. So and then every time that it just gets dull, they do something even more crazier. So what is this? This is something saying, look at me, look at me. Do you notice how any star and actor is willing to do anything to get you to look at them, right? So it's the same thing. They're willing to do anything to keep your attention because even if they get a minute, two minutes, two hours, two days, whatever, then the goal has been accomplished because the time that is needed is the time that is needed to focus on yourself. And so you take this, you're the candidate, you're the initiate, you're the holy arcanum, you're the ark. And the lies that have been perpetrated by gentlemen such as Paul the apostle who's Apollonius of Tyana taking revelations about Abraham and Sarah, who's Abraham and Sarah Swati from Hindu texts, putting in revelations as if it's John on the island of Patmos when it's really a Hindu text about seven churches, which is seven chakras, and then seven seals, which is those same wheels that are broken when you actually raise Kundalini upwards, right? And then now we're sitting in a dominion of a papacy, a papas, a pole, basically the, the, uh, the, uh, the limp masculine tense Mother Cersei, men who wear skirts, basically the judge comes in. They're, they're playing Mother Church because, see, they knew that the role, and we'll, we'll get to that back. We'll get, we'll get in then to the Mother Church when we come back because that's the key to things. All right, the key to things when we get back behind the scary door, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. Back in just a few minutes, folks. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live on the American Freedom Radio Network. Five days a week, two hours a day, you can tune in and you will always, invariably, hear a different guest talking about a different subject. That's the kind of guy I am. It doesn't matter uh, who you are. You could be a elected official. You could be a cop. You could be a... 9-11 conspiracy theorist you could be a drunk person at a bar or a drug dealer and i'll get along just what just all right with you that's just the kind of guy i am and my very special guest is uh Sivan. welcome back oh man it's definitely good to be forward so um i know we're probably where are we at the midway mark or are we a little bit over that we've got like 12 minutes left and then the show's over baby okay Okay, well, that's good. The train was running, so I guess at this point, it's just all about where we're going to take it for this last little adventure through inner space. Mm-hmm. Hmm, where should we go? Okay, so I, I think last could, time we could, left could, off, do you want to... Could I interrupt and, and just ask, exactly what started you off on this on this journey uh, <sighs> and all the thing together? Because you seem to have a vast amount of knowledge. It appears that you've done huge quantities of research over a long period of time. What sparked your interest in the first place, I wonder? Well, I will say first I was quickened, meaning that I took a, I took a light transfer. And that's just still something new. So, I, you know, I don't want to get into, I was on the cold floor of a ship and aliens were around me. I don't want to get into all that. But seriously, there's another level of information that could be translated to a person that goes beyond this three-dimensional tense. And I'll explain that. Now, you got a six and a seven sense being, okay? Because you got these five sense beings, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch. So you have six and seven senses, senses which actually correspond to when you merge sound and sight together. And then once that happens, now you're like see hearing <laughs> and then once you're see hearing anything that makes a noise you can see it everything that's making a noise you can see it because every noise is like a tube and that noise when that tube is open you can travel through it so what i was explaining to you is is that if you become tuned and sensitive enough to pick up the tones and the vibrations that are already like the car the cosmic orchestra then you can read the tone and the pattern of the complexity of what looks like a mandelbulb or a mandelbrock fractal. 
So again, you pull completely off of it and you can see that it's all one thing. But when you're all the way deep in it, it's so diversified. There's a billion different insects, thousands of different trees, you see? So what happened to me was, is that first of all, as a child, I was always very devout. Like I wanted to really know what happens when you die. That was just something that started since I was maybe four or five, when I come into the comprehensions of being able to calculate death. And at, at a certain point, I saw them fly a stealth bomber up because I grew up on a military base and it was the first time and they published on TV the budget. And it just didn't make any sense to me because <laughs> even as a child, I was like, well, why can't they take all that money and then figure out what's going to happen when we die? Because we're all going to have to deal with that. So seriously, as whoa, a child, whoa, 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 whoa. let me get this straight. As a child, you were wondering why they spent so much money killing people and didn't spend that money as to what happens to those people after you killed them. <laughs> so you can only imagine how in four. So these ideas became vainglorious by the time I hit around 15, 16 years old. I was already full ver fully versed in spiritual uh, lore because my mother also was spiritually inclined and she didn't allow us to do things like watch TV. She didn't allow us to eat. Uh, a lot of different things. She stayed on a very, very uh, 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 rigid uh, uh, structure because there was nine of us. So she couldn't let things get crazy anyway. Some people think, oh, that, that sounds like out of norm. Sounds like you were raising a crazy childhood. No, it was nine of us. So of course, if she let anything get out of control, then it was gonna cause a problem. So the schools were causing a problem. The kids next door, the way that their parents didn't clamp down on them and make sure they didn't do anything that was causing the problem. She recognized that early, so she removed us from that system. She homeschooled us. And then she also, being spiritually inclined, said, here's your books. Here's a basket of books. And so she gave me the City of Pigra for the Apocrypha, Bell and Dragon, for first, and, uh, uh, first and Second Maccabees. She gave me these books. So while everyone was reading X-Men about Hulk and, and Xavier, I was reading about Enoch uh, uh, doing uh, consultations with angels. <laughs> and it was the same thing to me. So, of course, I fell away. We all fall away. There was a point where I didn't want to see any. I was running out of the house. By 15, 14, I ran away. And then there was a time, of course, as you run away, you hit a brick wall fast. So there was a time where I had a moment to reflect and there were other men around me because I, I spent some, some short time in incarceration, a year and a half. And the men around me began to ask me spiritual questions and I had a, seemed to be a vast knowledge of what actually spirituality consisted of, even though at, before I was not practicing, as they call it, right? So then I realized that I had some kind of calling for this, but I was still deep in the fog of Mother Church. <laughs> I was believing that there was a Jesus. I was believing that there definitely was an external God on high that was working with a punishment-based system in order to get me to conform. And I kept that as that snake on the shoulder. Hey, you shouldn't do that. You should be here. You shouldn't be doing this. You should be around them. And in this whole conviction. Now notice the word conviction. Listen, I got the conviction of the Lord. The conviction of the Lord is a jail sentence. That's what I convicted him. So this is where I also began to expand because after I came out of that trouble, it didn't take long. I started realizing that Am I out of jail? <laughs> because the same feeling that you have in there, if you start looking very closely, you get it out here. It's just a bigger one. I, I saw Why a. I, I saw a, a great picture on YouTube, okay, there's, there's a little dude inside a little birdcage that is inside a much larger birdcage, and the door exactly. opens and he jumps out and he goes, I'm free! <laughs> exactly, that's what we're talking about, because why do I have to ask someone if I want to leave the country? Hey, can I go to China? No. <laughs> hey, China, can I, uh, or, or Israel, can I come in? No. So what is this? Am I really free or am I a prisoner of war? Because that was the end of the straw man. They finally, the straw men were digging for a long time. The people who were in that, and they, you weren't going to stop a sovereign that felt he was sovereign. They dig and dig and dig until they finally found a paper that said, oh, the reason why we're united, because they have bunched us all in one group, and that united group has the same status of a POW. So mm. that's why you have to you know, ask to leave. Incidentally, <laughs> did you know that POWs who have a strong spiritual belief are far more likely to survive than atheist POWs? <laughs> I'm sure, because they already seem uh, wet work. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm serious. It's like, you know, the, the degree of the, the wisdom that a person can inherit on here. Now, here's the other thing about the universe, because some people still want to know, well, what does the universe think? The universe is not thinking. That's why it's a universe. There's no gaps like that. See, thought is a gap. See, there's this place called the zone. You've seen some people get in it. <laughs> they get in the zone, and there's no thought like, am I going to make it? <clears throat> okay, I made it. Am I going to make it? There's none of that. There's just shooting the ball. So in a tense, because this is really a lot about uh, uh, copulation and a lot about reproduction, our fathers plunged deep into Maya, however you want to look at that. So in Maya is a womb, a matrix, a place where things are cultivated. It runs on a program in a system, surely. It's organized because it's in an organism called the universe, which is in order, or else all the planets would slam against each other. So there is something about order that is necessary. But it's all an internal thing, because when you're trying to control what's going on outside, you're not at the control point. Mm. <laughs> you're at well, the this point is what the, after the control point. This is what the 33rd degree Freemasonry is all about, order out of chaos, isn't it? Well, they would love to think so, because mm. reality is, is that they are so devoid of any level of truth because of Mother Church has externalized all the documents and they've gone, they've gone and wandered after the King Rex Mundi. Meaning that the Horn King, the one who's in the middle of the maze, which is really Earth, is the Sunranus, Sen the, 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 uh, the one with the elk horns and the stag, the, the bees, the god of the forest, all that's about the king who they're already aligned with. So they tell you very uh, 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 directly that they report to the Mother Lodge in England. The Mother Lodge reports to Rex Mundi himself, the Diaboli. Because you're not, then you're dealing with hyperdimensional time lords. Now you're out of the, the games of, uh, of the dynamics of what goes on in the universe because you're doing it to yourself. Now, remember, you can be coerced and conned. That's con is the king. Look, look, I, I got to rewind here. Khan is, is the king who's Cain, who's the Cohen, who's priest. All of these are the same words. Again, CNN is, is, co is, CNN is the word you're looking for. It's Canaan, C-A-N-N-A-N. -N -N. You drop all the vowels, C-N-N. Now you have Conan, C-O-N-A-N. Drop all the vowels, it's C-N-N. Now you have the canine, who's the dog god. Like I told you, it, this is a real thing. They're in heat. They're hunters. That's Orion. He's a hunter. They are hunting dogs. They left the hunt dog in charge of the whole thing before they went into the next level of their abuse. Meaning that to get beyond to who you really are, you must defeat the God dog. You must go down into the lower bowels and remove, dethrone the Lord. You see what I mean? This is whether it's a God you set up in your mind outside of you or whether it's some idol or something in front of you that you're allowing to govern who you are, all of it's got to go in order for you to be able to sit back in the throne. It's like, so all you're doing is then, since we're coming to the end of the, end of the show, all you're doing is, is you're going back in the body and you're saying, look, I'm back. I'm awake. Raise the Jed. Let's get everything in order. AstralQuest.com. All right. AstralQuest.com. 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 Dot com. Apparently repetition works, yep. <laughs> according to advertising people. Yep. So, <laughs> Savant, thank you very much for your time. It's been it's exhilarating been time, and extremely quick. Like, it was just exactly. like, who the hell did that hour go? It was just like, shh. I'm glad, you know, because sometimes it gets the dragon on, but we're getting rid of the dragon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, get rid of the dragon. And, uh, you know, you're talking about I'll be, I'll be back. You know, one of the many things I've learned from Arnold Schwarzenegger films. <sighs> okay. That's another show for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Sivan, for your participation. And also, uh, just bear in mind, we're listener-supported, so if you can donate or subscribe, be much obliged. See you again sometime.